to learn to live, to work, to invent, to create. Dr. Amitava Ghosh is a NASA planetary scientist who chaired the Science Operations Working Group at the NASA Mars Exploration Rover mission. He joins us from Washington. Good to see you again. All right, so we constantly hear about this mission to the moon. Why is America so hot on this? I mean, we just heard Bill Nelson talk about building a you know, colony there, but what for ultimately? How does this benefit humanity potentially? So, you know, if you thought when America was discovered, um, what would you, so, so it had the same arguments. What would you do by going to America? <laughs> you would take this very, very risky voyage and then there is nothing there. There's no civilization. What are you going to achieve? So we are kind of in that state. And so what I would say there is, there, there will be just one commercial use that will be found for the moon. And then you'll see that the traffic and the going, it is just like Walt Disney. You know, if you've gone to Disney World, he set up this um, amusement park in a swamp in Florida. Mm -hmm. And he said that, well, people all over the world are going to come and see the mouse, Mickey Mouse. And so, you know, his investors were very skeptical. It's kind of like that. We don't know if there is some sort of a, uh, say it becomes a thing for space tourism you will see huge activity. That frontier will open up. Yeah, I guess why not? If you can do it, why not do it? Who knows what we could find there, right? All right, so you also have now Elon Musk's SpaceX announcing privately funded Dear Moon missions that will use the massive Starship rocket to get there. And can spacecraft like Orion really compete with the massive technological and payload capacity of something like the SpaceX ship? So let me just, um, the capacity of Artemis uh, for the low Earth orbit is around 150, 130 tons. Um, spaceship is around the same capacity. So, you know, it's not a bigger rocket. It's about the same. The second thing is, you know, it is not really private funded. This particular mission, the Dear Moon mission, is actually privately funded. But the technology was developed by NASA funding um, from for the last 10 years. So the so Falcon 9 and um, one after the other, in, in some way or form, there is NASA funding there. So um, can NASA compete? There is one very interesting difference between Artemis and Spaceship is that um, in Artemis, the launch vehicles are not reusable. For Spaceship, they are. Hmm. So what this means is, imagine you're going from um, Turkey to New York and your plane had to be thrown away, then your cost of the ticket will increase probably a, a thousand times or a hundred times. Now, if the plane can be reused, then you are paying just maybe a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars. So Starship is reusable. Artemis is not. So the difference is maybe 30 or 50 million dollars per flight versus one to 1.5 billion dollars per flight. So so Starship will be immensely more usable, and NASA perhaps, if the technology is proven and proven to be safe, then uh, there is greater incentive to use that. Well, so do you see these missions as, at this stage, competitors then, or more collaborators? Well, it is part of the same NASA portfolio. Um, so, so this is really an exercise in risk managing the risk right mm -hmm. so you so so nasa has invested three efforts artemis um uh, spacex which is the starship and another by boeing so just this this will make sure that at least one or two or even three would be successful so it's a risk mit mitigation strategy so they're not competitors they are just collaborative efforts from the same funding agency. Got it. And also we see NASA now awarding contracts. Nokia, a contract to deploy a 4G network on the moon. And there's this other startup right. called Icon that's won a NASA contract under the Artemis program to 3D print human habitats and roads on the moon. Um, is this very premature or is it kind of all systems go, let's do as much as we can as soon as possible? No, I don't think it's premature. See, you, you have to think ahead. Uh, for example, 
the Perseverance rover is making oxygen on Mars. And if that technology is proven, they will have a bigger oxygen plant. So here also think that, you know, 10 years later, uh, somebody you know is headed to the moon and they have to perform their daily life. They need to move around in the lunar base. They need to communicate with each other. They need to have their own uh, power stations. So all these technologies will take time to develop. And this is what NASA is doing there. Uh, trying to put in the money um, to give enough time for these to develop. So this is not a dream. This is very realistic. This has happened in Antarctica. Um, um, if the cost of transport between Earth and Moon goes down, it is completely possible. Would someone want to live on the Moon? Is there any reason to want to be there? Very good question. So this is the million dollar. So this has to be, the moon has to be part of the mass market and not part of some government program for it to be successful. Mm. So what you ask is what I don't know and what you don't know. Yeah. Would you want to go to, instead of going to Tahiti, would you want to go to the moon for 15 days if the cost was say double? Um, no one knows. <laughs> so this is so um, unknown. It's like, if you think of, um, the internet. No one knew the state we are in. If you were in the 90s, you wouldn't have believed that we would be disconnected, but it has happened. Very true. That's a good analogy. Dr. Ghosh, excellent to talk to you as always. Thanks. <laughs>